Hello everybody, Dark Committee here from Split Polygon and welcome to the next chapter. And today we're gonna start to randomize some of the vegetation, add a little bit more details and uh, hopefully go a little bit closer to finishing this project. So I just went in bridge and I found two more uh, grass types. So I have a, a one more grass type actually and one flower or plant kind of thingy. So I'm going to add them to my scattering and uh, hopefully that's going to give us a little bit more randomness and more interest. But to do this, I actually want to try something different. Um, there is a way in MASH where you can place objects by hand so you don't have to rely on scattering. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to try this. It. Uh, I want to mention something in some of the previous versions in Maya it was a little buggy, so I'm, I haven't used this in a while. So make sure you save your scene before you do this operation because it may crash your Maya, or I don't know, it may have been just you know uh, an old version. But um, I just remember that being an issue. So I'm gonna go to Mesh, create Mesh network, make sure it's instance, and I'm gonna click Apply and Close. That's gonna give us the duplicates like before. Now I'm gonna hide or rather close these guys. So this is distribute uh, node, which is giving us these guys. I want to take that all the way down to zero. Instead, I'm gonna add a placer node. If it was called that, yeah, it's called placer node. So as soon as you do that, you're gonna get this tool set. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to. Um, pick and paint objects. So if I press B uh, to get my size bigger, it's going to start painting these guys. I can undo that. I can increase this or decrease the spacing. That's going to give us more. If I increase the spacing, it's going to space them out a little bit better. Because this scene is big, I'm going to probably need to go with some pretty big values over here. Um, and there's a couple of modes um, you can work with when using this thing. So first of all, this is not painting on the mesh. As you can see, this is painting randomly on on the geo, or randomly on the um, the grid, or it should actually, because there is no painting meshes added. So I can just take the ground plane and drop it in here. And now the placer node should. Uh, I, every time you go to placer node, you need to reactivate the brush. So now it should be following the geometry, like you see. All right, so let's go and get the spacing bigger. Something like this, maybe even bigger. Um, there we go. And as you can see, it's painting only one of the flowers, but we have a lot of objects that we've selected. And to do that, you need to go to ID and switch it to random. It's going to ask you from like what is the range of the randomness that you want. So if you go to your group, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So between 0 and 9 basically. Or you can do that by uh, checking the instance or node. So between 0 and 9. So back to our, <clears throat> excuse me, our placer node. I can say between 0 and 9 and that's going to list all of these guys. So if I grab my brush now, I can see I'm painting random um, random uh, objects. And the first mode that we have in this placer mode is just a, a stroke. If you want bigger density, uh, what you can do is you can click scatter and this is gonna uh, and this is gonna take the brush size in consideration and it's gonna paint more of them. So if I make the brush size bigger, it's gonna scatter within that radius more of these guys. 
So that is another option which I can basically use for the larger area. All right, and maybe I can make the brush size a little smaller and paint here and there just a few more. And you can actually even look from the camera point of view and just art direct these guys where they go and, and how much of them we see and, and all that. I'm going to disable scatter because I just want to place just a couple of them in specific places like this. And um, I have our grass clamps, uh, one, two, three. So I can go from five to nine. And this is going to give me more grass clumps. I'm just going to randomly add just a bunch more. Just like that. And we can look at from our camera point of view to see if we need more and just, you know, start placing them. Actually, I want to see some sand going in the distance, so I don't want to add grass everywhere. Maybe in front of some of these objects. Maybe we're close to the camera. Maybe that's just covering the log too much. And you can do you can do quite a bit of stuff. Like you can delete if you if you just made one you don't want. Let's say I don't want uh, I don't know this one I can just switch to delete and I can just go over and delete a bunch of these or you can um, if they're intersecting with each other you can click the collide brush and that's gonna move them apart it's gonna start spacing them out um, if you want to change the IDs let's say you want all of these to be one a specific ID let's say you want all of them to be grass you can just find which ID is the, the mesh you want and you can set a specific ID over here and whenever you paint, they're going to convert to that object. Or nudge is just to kind of move them over a little bit. If, let's say, you've painted a stroke and it's looking a little bit too uniform, you can just nudge them around, which is very, very good. All right. So that is... Oh no component mode all right so let's see how this one looks and let's start positioning some of these um, objects based on the render we have going on so I'm gonna save my scene start the render and this is gonna convert all of the textures again for the new objects that I've added And there we go, we start to see some grass poking through. We start to see some of these guys very, so the grass integrates a little better. We see some of the flowers here and there. Overall, I'm starting to be pretty happy with this. Now, I do think we need to do some adjustments, like this rock, for example, is, is way too dark in comparison. Um, we could add uh, something in the background, uh, maybe just space these guys a little bit, they are a little bit too close together. So let's do some experimentation, see if we can find something that works. So maybe what if we place some of the barrel, like, like the barrel for example, further away, and maybe do a duplicate special, reset the settings and make it an instance. And actually, why did that move that far? It shouldn't. So 
So edit duplicate special. Reset the settings instance. So all of these are zeroed out. Show should duplicate in place. There it is. So maybe we can just have more of these guys. Uh, maybe uh, some of them are buried in the sand. Like so. Duplicate special again. Move it around. Oh, wrong axis. Maybe bring this one. Actually, let me take the easier approach and drag this one over. And see if we can find an interesting position for this guy and maybe take the crate bury it in the sand I think it was floating before and maybe do a duplicate special on him and uh, wonder if it's gonna be interesting if we have one of these guys very up close But it's going to obscure the render too much. So maybe like a smaller object close to the camera would be better instead. Alright, so it's going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to rotate this guy so they don't look like they're exactly the same object. And this shovel could be a bit more a focused object like a more of an interest one so I'm just gonna bring this one between these two crates kind of have like a neg negative space which we can leverage maybe I'll give it a, a slight rotation this branch thing we can utilize a little bit more like that maybe grab this bottle thingy and duplicate special that and maybe that can be our close-up object and so far we haven't really modified the terrain to suit these objects we've only placed them around so maybe we can add like a final pass we can just take and sculpt this like a little bit of a sand piling up on these and kind of like ground them um, a little bit better and I have these lovely rocks over there and they're completely buried and not seen so I'm gonna do a duplicate special on them as well and maybe bring them close to the camera so we can appreciate them a little bit more they're a very cool asset so I think uh, it's gonna be interesting to have something to kind of lead our eye into this um, story piece. So maybe something like that. And we may need to bury this guy in the sand. Oh, actually, this is going to be displaced, so I may cover it. So let's see how it actually looks when we render. All right. Uh, Close the hypershade for now. And let's see how we're looking. Alright, not so bad. Yeah, I think we need to bury this this guy in the sand a little bit better. It will integrate nicer. Yeah, I think these guys may actually not work as as good as I thought close up because they are a little bit too contrasty and I don't want the viewer to kind <clears> of <throat> pardon me to spend too much time looking in this area of the image or I could just color correct them close to the sand and do it that way yeah let's actually try that um, if you have your render active if you click on an object 
in the render view, it will select it in the viewport as well, which is a very cool feature of Arnold. So if I open up Hypershade, I can graph these very quickly. I, <clears throat> I don't need the displacement. So this is the albedo. I'm just going to stick in a color correct color correct node uh, like we did before. Out color into color, color to base color. And I'm going to start the live session. And if you click on this uh, almost hashtag looking icon, it's going to be activating the uh, render region. So if you click and drag, it's going to make a region of it. <clears throat> and if we play the render, oh, actually, this is an instance where we need to update the scene. Because I've dis disabled the displacement, Arnold got confused and just decided to ignore this object because we broke the caching it, um, it was doing. So I need to go update full scene and give it a minute to re-translate the entire scene again. And our object should appear very soon. There it is. All right, so I'm going to activate live session. And first of all is I'm going to increase the exposure because I want them to be a little brighter. So increase exposure. So they become brighter. There we go. Maybe drop some saturation down just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. There we go. And maybe the contrast is a little bit too high. I'm going to drop that. I want them basically to blend in with the sand a little bit better. I want some detail, but I don't want them to be like straight in your face. And this is definitely a too dark of an object to be uh, close up here. So I either move this guy or I will color correct it to be a little bit more sun bleached. Maybe all of these guys need to be a little bit more sun bleached actually as well. So first things first is to fix the cut through of this object. So there it is. So we can update our terrain. Actually, this object is an instance of that object and I want all of these to sink in into the sand. So if I modify this guy, this will get modified and synced in as well, which is going to save me some time. So I'm going to do that instead. Just grabbing my soft select and merging these guys into the sand. There you go. I think we can merge this guy a little bit more. We can even activate the texture view. Oh, but here's one thing um, to uh, notice is if you stick a color correction node between your texture and your shader, um, Arnold will not display the color corrected version in the viewport it basically will not display any texture in the viewport. It will just make it gray like a Lambert. So if that happens, just so you know, <clears throat> your object is still there, like your shader is still working properly. It's just the viewport of Maya is not that capable of displaying utility nodes. So it just decides to ignore stuff. All right, so <clears throat> this guy is a little kind of like bugging me, sticking too much, so maybe I'm going to try to move it out of the way instead. Let's find it a better place and uh, go back to shaded view. And I'm definitely going to lighten that texture up. So um, we, I've disabled between the lessons, I've disabled displacement on these guys. So this guy is displacing just the vertices 
that are on the mesh it doesn't actually add anymore so I could leave it if I want to it will give us a little bit of a breakup uh, tab AI color correct out color to input out color to base color all right save our scene make sure you save your scene often guys when you're dealing with these kind of heavy scenes um, yeah Maya can can be temperamental and crush so all right so as we see we have a little bit of a cut through happening again and that is because our plane is being displaced up but also down so there's a couple ways we can deal with this we can either modify the ground plane or continue to modify the you know the surroundings of this but it actually what I wanted to try something if I graph this guy this is my color correct node for a minute I'm just gonna ignore this I'm gonna bypass it just so that in the viewport I can see my texture again I don't necessarily need this filler geometry so what I could do is just select this and delete it. It will save me some polygons and it will save me some work. All right, so that's all of them cleaned up, and uh, <clears throat> let's bury them in the sand a little bit more, and maybe modify some of the edges to um, accommodate for the deletion of polygons. Because right now the <clears throat> pardon me, the edge is not even. And we're going to have to check at render time to see if uh, we need to do even more modification. All right, looks good to me, at least for now. Now let's tweak that uh, texture that we've added the color correct for. So I'm going to go back and re-add this. And then I believe we've added this guy. Yep. So now let's go to our render view, which is over here, and see how we're looking. Yeah, so now we have a little bit of a gap, which I'm going to fix in a minute. Uh, but right now I want to focus on this guy. So control shift and drag is going to make this isolate selection for us. So I'm going to click on the node and bring this to the other monitor so we can have some space. So I want this to be brighter, which means exposure is going to go up. And I'm going to desaturate it to make it look a little bit sun bleached. And that's going to do the same for this guy. Maybe it's a little bit too close to the sand. Maybe I'm going to drop the exposure down. There we go. Alrighty. 
I think this guy is sticking out too much and these rocks are definitely too dark. So let's start fixing these guys one by one. So we find our albedo map. <coughs> And we add AI color correct. And we plug it in and select it and bring the render view. Select the region, start the render. Rinse and repeat. So add a little bit of exposure. That actually did it. I don't think I need to do anything more for them. I think these two barrels look very similar because they are the same barrel so I might take this one and shift it behind the rock and maybe take this one and maybe sh move it a little bit um, because I don't really like the position of where this barrel is right now. So let's see camera point of view and can we do something more interesting with this thing? Um, let's take it behind the rock. Yeah, maybe just having it there to kind of poke through a little bit it's gonna be nice and these two crates are too close to each other and kind of obvious that there's the same they're the same prop so let's see what can we do to fix that maybe bring one of them closer and reposition this keep bringing this guy <laughs> close up to the camera, I don't know why. Maybe have this guy tilted, kind of like buried in the sand and maybe standing barrel, it's a little bit weird to have. So maybe just a, a, a simple roll and kind of like embed it in the sand would do the trick. I'm trying to avoid any tangents, so I don't want things to kind of like, like lines to be straight and and things to, to create weird tangent loops. So maybe just move this guy over. And re-render. All right, I think that placement of these look a little bit more natural now. Now I want to keep the shovel contrasty but I'm gonna take the saturation out and maybe even make it brighter. So let's repeat the same step. Add AI color correct and input to input. There we go. Yep, yeah, that's activated. And let's drag a region and start rendering. So if we crank up the exposure and desaturate a bit, there we go. Hmm. Alrighty. Yeah, I think that actually works. Maybe I can bring some of the contrast down a little bit too. Well, don't make it bigger, make it smaller point. Fine. And then increase saturation by a bit. Mm. Yeah, maybe 
going nine. Yeah, I actually like that. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna fix these guys. They need to be very, very minimal, so I'm gonna take and submerge most of these. They're just here to break the illusion just very slightly. Oh, wrong window. Maybe render region here. These are good. I have a little more work on this little guy. So grab this. Soft select and bury that in the sand. And there we go. That is looking much better. Now, I kind of like the grass thingy that I have over here, so I may add a little grass here and there just to break things up a little, little bit more. And uh, I think we're getting very close to being done with this guy. All right, so where are we? Uh, animation. Mesh, Mesh Editor, Placer Node, Add. So basically I want to grab my Instancer and I have my grass clamps from 7 to 9. I don't want any of the Dove's foot flowers so I want to take Placer 9 and I'm going to say from 7 to 9. Nine, yeah, and I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna make my brush size smaller, and I'm gonna add here and there. Maybe like right there, add a few. Oops, that's intersecting. I wanna try to avoid intersection. And I do want to add more grass overall, so maybe I'm going to activate scattering and make a bigger brush size and just populate this area with a little bit more grass from what the camera can see. And let's go to perspective one and fill in some of these guys a little bit more. Maybe um, add more points when I scatter so it doesn't add just one. And these guys look very chunky, but remember these guys have opacity map on them. So if you zoom in right in, like this this blade is gonna be like like tiny at render time because the texture and this is like right in the middle. So even if it looks full, it's not actually that that full, if it makes any sense. So I'm gonna add just a a bit more just to kind of fill in this area a little bit. This rock is a little alone over there. So I'm going to get out of this mode and grab that rock. And this is a weird selection issue in the viewport. They stay highlighted for some reason. There you go. Just a weird glitch. So maybe grab this guy and do a duplicate special. Uh, maybe find a cool place to fill in a little bit of a gap somewhere if we have. That palm tree, I left it there and I didn't touch it to be honest. I might try to find some more interesting 
position for it. Let's see how that one looks. And with the more updated grass. Yeah, I quite like this. See, it looked very dense, but it's, you can still see a lot of sand in between. So that's why I was um, pushing the density more and more on this. And these little grass blades, they kind of ground these props a little bit better. So that's nice. And OK, so let's do something here. So let's select the camera and go to Perspective Shape, Arnold section and let's activate depth of field. Um, aperture size, maybe we can set it to 1 just to start. That's going to be probably too much. Let's say 0.2 to start. And focus distance is where you want your focus to be. So I have these um, stats enabled. So if I select this, you're going to see this object is 292 uh, centimeters away. So I'm going to select my camera back and set that number. And I'm going to start the render. And we're going to start to play with the aperture to get the result we want. I'm not really sure exactly what I want to go for just yet, so I'm going to I'm just going to play around and see. That might be a little bit too much. Hmm, interesting. It does give it a little bit of an interesting um, effect, but um, I think we may be pushing it too much, so let's go 0.5-ish. Well, that's not bad, actually. One thing I do want to do, though, is um, maybe introduce a little bit of a fog in the scene to kind of like an atmospheric fog. Although this is not that far away, you wouldn't see that much. I can try to do something more interesting. Um, the lighting is kind of flat. So if I rotate the light, um, it will give me a different result. But just for now, I'm going to keep it and see what I can do with this. So. Let's go to Arnold section, environment. You're going to see we have atmosphere. So we can create a bunch of these and uh, we can go with fog or atmosphere volume. I think atmosphere volume is going to be a better one. So let's try that one and let's give it a density of, I don't know, 0.1. And for the color, I'm going to pick something from the HDRI. So kind of like a a yellowy, slight yellow color. And if I render this right now, it's not going to do much because. Where's my render view? Not you. Not you. Uh, because um, Skydome light do not affect volume. So you need another light that will affect the volume. So what we can do is figure out our light position in the HDRI which should be behind, yes, so it's right around there. So if we make a light coming from this direction, we can uh, kind of fake that this is like volume effects coming in. So to do that, we can do a Arnold lights. We can do area light, scale it up, bring it all the way here, rotate it to shine like this so
So that's one option. Or another option is if we go to create lights spotlight, you can create a spotlight like a normal Maya spotlight that will render with Arnold as well. If you go to Arnold, you see we have all of these stuff. And if you go to the filters, you have a special filter that uh, it exists on uh, the spotlight. It's called Gobo. So if I click Gobo and click Add, um, I'm going to actually disable, I'll delete the area light. Let's try with this one first. So first let's set a exposure and let's give it um, about 10. I'm going to actually disable my skylight for now. I just want to see how my spotlight's going to affect my scene. So save my scene, start the render. That's going to be probably black. It's too uh, kind of a too weak of a light for now. We need more exposure. And if my spotlight, grab that. Actually, yeah, grab that and maybe add 15. There we are. You start to see something. So now if we rotate the light, we can see there's the fog that we've introduced. So maybe we can move it. Uh, let me pause the render so I can have more interactiveness. We can move it behind the tree. Kind of like shining on the shovel. There we go. Maybe move it back a little bit. Get a bit more moodiness happening. Now, the reason why we've added the gobo is we have a palm tree, but this doesn't actually have any leaves. But we can fake this by adding a gobo. So if I add it, uh, actually I added the gobo, I can double click on the gobo, and it's going to open this up. So I have a map and density. So if I start increasing this, it's going to start to block the light, kind of like a light blocker. But this one actually creates a virtual plane that has ability to load textures. So if I go to File, I have a texture that I'm going to load. And the texture looks like this. So this is just a black and white silhouette of a palm tree. All right, so that's loaded. Now I'm going to try to render. All right, so I'm going to switch mine to blend. And uh, you're going to see we have these lovely streak effects happening. And if we go to perspective one view and we tumble around to see what's going on, we have the light coming in from there being split between the darks and the whites of that image. And that is what is shining on our scene, which is pretty cool, actually. So if we look at it from the point of view of this, we're going to start to kind of resemble that image a little bit. So there's the trunk and there's the... And we can even disable the trunk so we can have just the leaves kind of scattered around. If you want, we can paint that out. But I don't want to be too picky about it. I'm not trying to make the perfect scene here. I'm trying to... I'm going to show you guys how you do stuff. Alright. So let's go to perspective. So I can see how this is affecting my scene. Alright, I like this. I might actually move it a little bit more. just so I can get a little bit more streaks happening with more interest, a bit more focus on the shovel maybe. Now let's activate the other, the main light and just start to balance these guys out. You see now this is kind of defeating, you know, this is so bright that you start to lose all of that. You can kind of see it there just a tiny bit. That means this guy needs more power. So this is a sun, which means it needs a sun color. So I'm going to go color, pick, and I'm going to 
maybe grab some of this yellowy yellowy thingy and when you pick stuff from this uh, HDRI make sure you don't go over 1 so this is going for 1.5 I'm just going to clamp that to 1 I don't want it to um, and I, I don't want to go too unrealistic and let's see exposure let's try 17 it's going to start to introduce some of those rays and the color of those rays is going to depend on the color of the light plus the color of the fog that you've set up so it could be where you um, you may went a little bit too yellow on one or the other so you may need to tone it down which I actually might do now here's another thing um, this is one kind of look we can go for a little bit more stylized where this is like focused on the camera on the the camera is focused on the shovel and, and the light is conveniently shining on it with the god rays and everything or you can do something different where you can point these guys towards the other part of the image so I'm just gonna try to find a cool spot and maybe we can change the cone angle a little bit to be wider so it, the the ray of light you know it's a lot bigger something like that so yeah just a bunch of you know different methods you can use to kind of add a little bit more volume to and like atmosphere to your scene like I said, realistically, this would not probably happen that much. And if, if you don't want this kind of streaks effect, you know, it, you can just disconnect the gobo and you're going to tone down the, the exposure of this guy. And maybe even do something different where you would actually, let's mix the colors a little bit and get a little bit more purple. So if I get this color and if I mix it with a little bit of a blue it's gonna start to be a bit more atmospheric instead and we can kinda check what the light affects and maybe position it better or just move it to a different location If it's just a simple fog, you don't have to be realistic with the position of the light. As long as you um, kind of make it makes sense in the scene. So that is something that I can go with. And then if I go to visibility, you have a volume visibility on the actual spotlight. I can just say, I don't want this volume. I just want 0.3% of this or 0.4%. So just a tiny bit of haze, tiny bit of volume, but don't overdo it too much. All right, and we can try to play around with the camera a little bit more. Go to Arnold, and this is not the correct camera. Select the perspective. And um, let's see. Let's introduce uh, more blades. This is probably not going to um, do too much because you need like a very shiny specular object to kind of see a like a bokeh effect. That's that's what that's for. Um, let's try a little bit more depth of field, like maybe point seven. I'm going a little bit more stylized with this, but I like pushing things a little bit, so. All right, maybe that's a little bit too much, maybe 0.6. And I think it's time to increase the resolution so we can have a little bit of a better representation of what 
is going to actually render. So let's jump to 1080p for first, and then we can do even higher if we want to. And that's going to recalculate the render view if you change the resolution. All right, nice. Now, one thing that you can do if you really wanted to is get like little tiny stones and do like a section of this where you can scatter like a, a thousands and thousands of them just to kind of get this sand to really pop and feel like a real sand. But I don't think we need to go that far for the tutorial, to be honest. Like there's a billion and other things you can do to make this look, you know, better. And we will do a little bit of uh, com uh, like a of color correction, compositing in Photoshop just to kind of bring everything together and and call it a day but um, yeah for like for the sake of the tutorial but there's like a hundred things you can do to to improve this so first thing first is um, let's adjust some of the render settings uh, we're getting a little bit too noisy results so I'm just gonna bump up the AA samples to five and this is like the overall multiplier Every time you use a in-camera um, depth of field, you're going to need higher AA samples. And another thing I wanted to try, and this is a little bit of a new thing. I haven't tried this before, to be honest. But I know that the, the thing exists. So if you select the shader, if we go to Sheen, this is usually done for clothing. But because uh, sand has this kind of like a soft roll off, fall off effect, I'm gonna try to incorporate a little bit of that. So maybe, maybe just grab some of this color and make it a lot brighter and desaturate it and activate the sheen a little bit. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on this camera, this store snapshot, and activate. And maybe I'm just going to drag a render over here because with the new render settings, it's going to take a little bit longer. So you can see this just adds just a little softness. Uh, maybe try to play around with the roughness. So this is 0.3. If it's 0.1, it's going to push it towards the edges, which is actually what I want. So that is good. And maybe the weight uh, 0.1 just to tone it slightly down. I don't want it to look like velvet. I just still want it to look like sand. All right, guys. So with this, I'm going to call this done. I'm going to do a final render with um, a bigger resolution and I'm going to probably increase the A samples even more because I, I see there's quite a bit of noise in the depth of field uh, yet. So I'm going to increase that, do a render and I'll see you in the very last chapter where we're going to take this to Photoshop and maybe composite it. Alright, see you in a bit.